All right, lesson one of the first lesson of the third quarter. Um, we're going to talk about constant ratios, um, which are a part of a certain kind of function. So an blank function, um, and when you guys were in class, I was asking you, what do you notice about the, the generic form of this function? Uh, what new operation do we have? It's going to have an exponent. So our type of function that we're going to be looking at are exponential functions. Oh, man. Um, and so this is the general form of it. We have two things, a and b. Linear function, we had y equals mx plus b. So we had m and b. Um, they can both be real numbers, pretty much any number, except for b cannot be less than 0, so it can't be negative, um, and it cannot be equal to 1. If we were to plug in a 1 for the b and raise it to any power, say to the third power, then we would have 1 times itself 3 times. Uh, anytime we multiply 1 by itself, no matter how many times, it's going to give us 1, and it's going to get rid of our exponent. So if we put a 1 in there, it would eliminate the exponent, and it would take it to a linear, back to a linear equation, not even an exponential function. So uh, there's basically three parts to this function. Uh, the little tiny x there represents our exponent. The thing that is raised to that exponent, we're going to call the base. Uh, in this lesson, we're also going to refer to it as the constant ratio. And then this number out front, uh, that is going to be where our line crosses the y-axis. So it's the y-intercept. We're going to use constant ratio and y-intercept as we're graphing our functions. Um, Complete each table. That's the first thing we're going to do. Identify the constant ratio as well as the y-intercept. Um, then we're going to graph our values here, our ordered pairs, and label uh, the name of the function on there. So to fill out this table, we're going to use our function. In this case, it is 4 to the power of x. And so we're going to start with 4, but this column is telling us what our x values are. So our first one here, well not our first one, but 0 is the easiest one to start with. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take and plug in 0 for x. So instead of 4 to the x power, we'll say 4 to the 0. Uh, anything to the 0 power is 1. Backside of the worksheet has a, a little bit of an explanation about why that is the case, but no matter what it is, if it's 99 to the 0 power, if it's a fraction to the zero power, it's going to be one. So that's a good one to start with because it's the easiest. Uh, let's go ahead and just keep on plugging in our x values, four to the one. Four multiplied by itself only one time is just four. We are not taking four times one. That's not what an exponent says, but it ends up being the same as four times one. It's really four times itself one time. Um, now, we actually have to do some math. We're going to say 4 squared, which is really just 4 times itself twice, which gives us 16. Uh, the negative ones uh, are a little bit trickier, um, because if we plug that in, so 4 to the negative 1 power, that's saying we need to multiply 4 by itself a negative number of times which at first seems like nonsense, but we can do it. Uh, to multiply something a negative number of times, we're going to go backwards from multiplication, which is division. So we're going to treat this like a fraction. A fraction is just division. And we're going to flip it over so it says 1 divided by 4. And that gets rid of the negative sign. We're still multiplying by itself um, one time, but 
we've turned our original multiplication by 4 into division by 4. Uh, the trick there is just to flip it. So give yourself this note. We're going to take these two numbers and flip it. Flip that fraction over. And now 1 quarter to the 1 power is just 1 quarter. It's itself. We can do the same thing with the last one here. We're going to take uh, 4 to the negative 2 power. And I'm going to get it ready by putting a 1 under it. I can divide anything by 1. It doesn't change the value. I'm going to go ahead and flip it right away. 4 1's turns into 1 fourth. And I put parentheses around it. You notice there's parentheses around this over here. And that lets me know that our exponent does not just apply to the top number. It applies to both of them. So um, I can go ahead and take now 4 times itself twice, or 1 quarter times itself twice. 1 quarter times 1 quarter. And to multiply fractions, we multiply straight across, both bottom and top. 1 times 1 on the top is 1. And 4 times 4 on the bottom is 16. Uh-oh. It was 1 over 16. So we filled out our table. Uh, it says identify the constant ratio. Well, this constant ratio is what we multiply by to get to the next one. If we take a quarter, we multiply it times 4, we get 1. If we take 1 multiply it times 4, we get 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Constant ratio is 4. And the constant ratio is always going to be the number that is risen to the exponent. So you can just take that number and put it there. The y-intercept is always going to be the y value when x is 0. So whatever's right across from the 0 for the x value is our y-intercept. The very last thing is to take each one of these ordered pairs. So this has an x and a y value. Oops. x value and y value. And we're going to plot a point for each of these five ordered pairs. So the first one, we go the x. So here's our x axis. And it says negative 2, so we find negative 2 on here. Negative 2 is right here. Oh, this is a really... Uh, these numbers get really big. So negative 2 would be right here. So we go uh, to the left 2, and then we go only up 1 16th. So it's going to be barely up at all right there. When we go uh, to the left 1, then we're going to go up a quarter still. Might as well just be touching. Our y-intercept, when we stay right in the middle, we go up 1. Now we can start to actually see what's going on here. Uh, when we go to the right one, we're going to go up 4. And when we go to the right 2, we're going to go up 16. So our connecting the dots whoop, is going to give us an L-shaped curve. It's a curve that's never going to go below 0 here, never going to dip down into this quadrant. I mean, it shouldn't ever go quite vertical. And we're going to label it as f of x. And we'll go ahead and take a look at our second example. Same thing. We're going to use the function we're given, g of x. Probably you should say g of x right here. Um, we're going to input x into this, and it's going to output uh, the answer, which we're going to put in the, the square across from it. So uh, we can just write this out really quick, get, get ready. Uh, we can say one-third uh, to the negative two power. We can say one-third to the negative one power. One-third to the zero. Always one-third. The only thing that's changing 
is this number is our new exponent. Uh, I like to start with zero because it's the easiest one. Anything to the zero power <clears throat> is one. And then the right below it is also pretty easy. Anything to the one power is itself. Now this one, before I had you guys write out uh, one third, well, it was one fourth over there, but one third to the second power would be one third times one third. You don't have to write it out necessarily. You could just distribute this squared to the top. One squared is one, and then distribute it to the bottom as well. We're going to square the three on the bottom. Three squared is nine. Keep you from having to write this out. And we get the same thing, multiplying straight across one on the top, straight across on the bottom, three times three is nine on the bottom. We'll go ahead and flip these over before we can work with them. They're already fractions, so we can just flip right away. One third turns into three ones, and it's risen to the one power. This takes care of itself pretty quickly as well. 3 divided by 1 is just 3. Any divi anything divided by 1 is itself. And then anything raised to the 1 power is also itself. Uh, let's go ahead and do the last one here. Flip it again to get rid of that negative right there. So instead of to the negative 2 power, since we flipped it, it's to the 2 power. And just like what we did down here, well, we could... Uh, distribute that to both of these. Since this is in parentheses, though, we could do the division first. Um, so doing the division first, 3 divided by 1 is just 3, and then 3 squared is 3, to, three times 3, which is 9. Um, we, we could have distributed it. We could have said uh, 3 squared is 9, and 1 squared is one, one divided, 9 divided by 1 is just 9. Um, so there's more than one way of doing this. Uh, now we've got our table filled out. Our constant ratio, we started with 9, and then there's something we can multiply 9 by to turn it into 3. Same thing that we multiply by turns it into 1. Um, and that is this 1 third up here. Just copy this down. One third, and sure enough, if we take three and we multiply it by one third, cut it into thirds, we get one. If we have one, we cut it into thirds, we get one third, and so on. Uh, go ahead and take your y-intercept, which is the y-value when x is zero, and we'll put it right here, and we'll go ahead and graph this one. I changed this on the worksheet so yours might be easier to graph. Um, Regardless, go ahead and take a look at your, your numbers um, and whatever scale it has there. Uh, your, like I said, yours might be show bigger graphs, but we'll go ahead and graph these five ordered pairs. Uh, negative two, so left two, and then up nine. Left one and up three. Stay right in the middle and go up one. And then we're going to go to the right one, up a third, to the right two, and hardly up any at all. So again, we create this L-shaped curve. Since each time we're multiplying by one third, we're multiplying by a number less than one, um, it starts big and it gets smaller and smaller. So this was our g of x. And we're done with that one. As a side note, uh, if we were to multiply by 1, then no matter what we have in here, um, we could raise 1 to the 0 power, it'd be 1. We could raise 1 to the negative 1 power, it'd be 1. 1 to the 2 power, 1 times 1 is 2, it would be 1. And so it would create this flat line at 1. No matter what we would input, we would get 1, and so it would be a flat line instead of an exponential. 
that's enough. Um, you can go ahead and use these two examples, uh, 4 to the x power, 1 third to the x power, to help you with the, the first two problems on your worksheet. Instead of 4 to the x, it's 2 to the x. So you're just changing that number. Your math is going to be a little bit different, but your process is just the same. And the process is going to be just the same with this one over here. Uh, so I'll let you get to it. And uh, see you guys in class tomorrow or whenever the next time you have classes. Where's my stop button?